Yes. If you don't want to use those services, there is an open and unmediated internet that you are allowed to publish whatever you'd like on. But if you're going to use a social network that's created by somebody else, then you are beholden to their rules. Sure. We see the issue here, right? You're the one who has a problem with their rules. Really glad to have our next guest. Uh, I think he thinks that I'm the boogeyman. That's usually what people think when they come on this show if they don't necessarily uh, uh, come from the same political persuasion. You can follow him on Twitter at Josh Constein. He's a writer for TechCrunch. Mr. Constein, thank you for being here, sir. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to have you. Now, um, are you are you here uh, out of your own free will, or do we need to notify the authorities? Is someone putting the lotion on its skin there? That background looks a little... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm here on my own volition. Uh, I'm hoping to have a good civil discussion about some really important topics. Okay, so you're not, you are, in fact, this is your own basement. Uh, no, this is the TechCrunch office. Oh, okay. All right. So I see. Just boosting morale and what have you. Uh, listen, Josh, I, I wanted to uh, talk with you because I saw your article up here at TechCrunch, and uh, it was titled Silenced by Free Speech, in which you were putting forth, um, I, I don't want to misrepresent you, you're putting forth, I guess, some solutions, assertions regarding the policing, the treatment of speech on social media platforms. I'm not going to lie, I come at this from the other point of view, so I'd love to hear what it is, I guess, in your own words, um, you were asserting with the article. Yeah, so modern social networks, there's just a fundamental incongruency with being completely and unabashedly uh, open to all forms uh, of replies, uh, insults, and harassment, and being a place for civil discussion of important issues. Uh, while the, while you know, free speech is critically important, that right was not designed with the in mind with people being able to come to you, shout in your face, and say, these are their beliefs. Everyone is welcome to speak their own beliefs, but I don't think other people are necessarily obligated to listen or have that speech come into their house, you know, whether you call that you, somebody coming into your front door and screaming at you or coming to your Twitter profile and screaming at you. And so I believe that social networks need to do more to protect people uh, from this kind of harassment. That's not protecting people from having their own points of view. Nobody should be censored for having those perspectives if they're you know, tweeting them on their own profiles. But when it comes to replies, where a lot of this abuse happens, I think that there needs to be some changes made. And Twitter has announced a bunch of changes uh, to promote safety on its platform, but none of them right now address the fundamental problem, which is in replies. And so in Silence by Free Speech, uh, I discuss how, well, some social networks have put up a defense that they're being completely pro-free speech, but in doing so, they're allowing harassers to actually silence other people by bullying them into being quiet. And oh, so, okay. yes, yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't want to jump, but you kind of unpacked a few things there. Do you mind if I ask a, a couple of questions? Sure. So you started off with uh, the First Amendment. So I'm interested, I'm interested as to why you started off there and, and mentioned the founding fathers. You mentioned how it wasn't, they couldn't have conceived sort of this interconnectivity, as, as, as you put it in your article. Um, first off, before we get off on that, do you believe this is a First Amendment issue or a Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube have the right to do what they want as a business issue? Because you start off asserting First Amendment wasn't designed with this technology in mind. Yeah, this is about what Facebook and Twitter are doing on their platforms. As businesses, they are not beholden to to uh, unequivocally allow any type of speech. Absolutely. Even so, that that is where uh, what I'm discussing here. But then, why uh, would you? Uh, their, my question is, why position, would you start with First Amendment and then go into businesses have the right to do what they what they want to do? That they're completely separate. They're unrelated. You 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 invoke the First they're, Amendment. They're not unrelated, unfortunately, because these companies are saying that the First Amendment and the free and free speech are why they're allowing this abuse. So okay. this is their their rationale so, for for not policing uh, their platforms uh, or for not uh, protecting victims is that it's all part of free speech. They're the ones pointing to the First Amendment. They're the ones pointing to the First Amendment, and that's why the first paragraph in the, of your article and the first thing you mentioned is the First Amendment did not account for this technology. So that's your argument uh, in response to their rationale. I, I just want to make sure I'm understanding this clearly. Yes. Okay. Um, Let's do that first. Where does that line get drawn? Is it at the printing press? Is it with the typewriter? Is it with the computer? Is it with social media? Uh, where does the First Amendment still apply? Uh, 
the First Amendment applies to people's own speech. Okay. So that can be in, in so many what, forms, but so what would that do that with technology, though? Because that's that's your assertion is that they, it didn't take into account this interconnectivity, the technology that we currently have. So I'm, I'm just trying to clarify what your position is because I'm not entirely clear in the article, and, and and you went down a few different paths that I would like to explore. Then how does technology? It could not be less relevant. Uh, well, it's obviously very relevant because speech is conducted through technology nowadays. So I don't understand how you could think those things are totally separate. They're separate uh, based on what you just said, that someone has the right to say whatever they want. But then you say that the First Amendment didn't account for current technology. So I just asked you, where does it stop? And you just said it's in relation to your own speech. So does the First Amendment, for example, apply when you're using the telephone, speaking freely with your family members? Uh, does it apply to sure. a town crier? It does. Okay. If you're talking, yeah, if you're talking to someone who consensually wants to speak with you on the phone, you're allowed to say whatever you want. Does but if you call someone at all hours of the night over and over again to scream at them, you can be charged for harassment. Sure. You can be charged for stalking. Absolutely. And isn't it, isn't it wonderful that with new media, social media like Facebook, Twitter, um, you can block, you can mute. I think that's the fundamental assertion that I disagree with here, your presupposition that people have to listen. Therefore, uh, the people at the top, from the top down at Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, need to do something about it. No one's forced to use these applications and no one has to listen. You can't, before caller ID and you were on a rotary phone, someone called you, asked if your refrigerator was running, you had to say, damn it, and hang up and hope it didn't happen again. Now you know, you can block and mute. Yeah, but but if somebody kept calling you from different phone numbers every day, a different phone number, you couldn't block those, right? But that's already a violation of the rules. Exactly, but you couldn't block those phone numbers. You're saying that blocking is fine, but if I called you from a different phone number every day, you couldn't block but those, right? I assume that you're obviously drawing a connection here to sock accounts, to bot accounts, to creating multiple accounts for harassment campaigns, because I know you've written about that, uh, and I would agree with you, but that's already a violation of the rules. You're suggesting new rules and stricter enforcement. So I guess my question here is you say that free speech isn't free if someone is intimidated by somebody else's speech. Is Am I misrepresenting what you've said there, or is that the general premise. Uh, 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 no, you're misrepresenting me. It's okay, not about whether it someone is offended. You, you, people are you know, welcome to say views that offend other people. But when you start to directly uh, reply to people, when you're shoving that, that perspective in somebody else's face, it becomes different. It's not about, oh, you're in the street saying your point of view. If that's so, I can just walk away. But if every day you create a new Twitter account and reply to me and put those uh, those messages into my timeline, into my All replies, right, not mentions, it's different. Um, well, it, it isn't allowed to do it on one account, but that hasn't stopped anyone from creating new accounts to do that harassment every day. Well, so that's why I'm but, saying but, that but the current block options are inadequate. Okay. Well, again, that's not really that's not really what you're writing about in your article. You're talking about new. No, that's rules. exactly what I'm writing about in my article. Oh, I would encourage people to read over there. Tech crunch. Mis Fully automatic weapons are already heavily re regulated, right? Someone can buy a semi-automatic weapon and transform it. That's illegal. It doesn't change the fact that it's illegal. It's already illegal to create targeted harassment campaigns online. It's already illegal to stalk somebody online. People get banned for these offenses. And the important thing is, for example, threatening somebody, you know, grievous bodily harm or calling people to violent action or continually targeting harassing. The reason that these policies are in place and aren't allowed is because they mirror directly our laws. It's illegal to do that. Going a step further beyond that, which you suggest in your article, then that becomes, as you discuss it, censoring. These were your words, not mine. Uh, then you kind of become the thought police. Yeah, I'm not asking anyone to be the thought police. I'm just saying that if you, if you force people to register their accounts to a phone number, then when somebody is banned, like you said, then that ban actually sticks. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is that the ban works fine right now, and it doesn't. You know that. You know that anyone can create a second account anonymously and they can harass somebody again, even if they were banned yesterday. And so, yes, I'm saying that people should have to register their accounts to a phone number, which okay. makes it much more difficult to create new accounts to continue that harassment after they've been banned for breaking the rules. Right. So, OK, so now we're moving forward with, with solutions. And I appreciate that you actually put forth a solution. You think that a policy should be an account directly tied to a phone number. That's at least one way to improve uh, prove the condition by increasing friction to creating new harassment accounts. Okay. Other ways to do that, other signals would be requiring that people have been on the service for a long enough period of time or that they don't have any other signals that they haven't been reported for other violations. Sure. Do you support Antifa being on Twitter or Facebook? 
That has nothing to do with this uh, topic right now. It has everything to do with it. What about Black Lives Matter? What about Fight for 15? Uh, I, do, I do support Black Lives Matter. Okay. Uh, but yeah, now, but considering that many of these people... Specific groups about this. Specific group, but I'm not aligned uh, with I know every you're not single aligned. person or I, every I can, action. So uh, can to, I finish my, to try to bring it to there seems disingenuous. So no, why don't I'm, we talk I'm not, about trying, to, I'm not trying to tie, tie your opinion to theirs because I know for a fact that you've supported these groups being on these social media platforms. So do I, by the way. But again, unpopular speech, I have a problem with anonymity, by the way. It breeds cowardice. We can both agree on that. But unpopular speech is speech that often needs to be protected most. So let's take Antifa, Black Lives Matter, Fight for 15, for example. They very often, most often, aren't tied to an individual person and phone number account. Should we shut down all local chapters of Antifa on Twitter because it's anonymous? There's no person attached to it? Uh, it's not about anonymity. It's about harassment. You just said the solution was a phone number. So if someone wants right. to remain anonymous, right, if someone wants to protect themselves, he, I'm using an example, a very clear example of which we would have some kind of precedent here, organizations that don't set a phone number, that don't attach a private address or name to it, should they be removed? Well, if they, uh, if they create a new account and they've been suspended for, for breaking the rules, then yeah, if they want to be able to continue to reply to people, but the problem is rarely that these groups are, are caught. The, the trouble is when people are replying specifically to specific actors, and that's where the abuse comes from. So just because a, an account is anonymous or is tweeting their own perspectives on either side of the aisle, okay. on either side of an issue, that's not a problem. The problem is abuse directed at specific people. Sure. And that's what, I, that's what the rules that I, I proposed would help to combat. So, we, so we've just abandoned the idea that you would need a phone number to be attached to a Twitter account to be created. That, that wouldn't apply to groups no but if you want to create a new a new twitter account if you want to be able to how would uh, you know if it's a new account people, if you don't if you didn't already register with a phone number right, well if you want to be able to continue to reply to people after being reported then yeah you would need a, to uh to register an account so and the I standard i, think, I want to make sure the standard groups, reporting these groups have Josh, groups Josh, Josh, is the standard reporting because you've written extensively about mass flagging and mass reporting campaigns occurring from the alt-right you've written about this sure. people have talked about this so the standard that you just use not me is being reported and you need a phone number. Now you've said, well, no, you wouldn't need a phone number. It's if you're replying and if you've been reported. So let's say a group like Antifa has no phone number attached or Black Lives Matter or Fight for 15 or whatever it is, the SEIU, no phone number attached. This is an organization. They've replied. They've been reported as harassing. Remove them? It would depend on whether they were actually found to have been harassing and who someone determines or not this? if they've been reported. This is where we're going. Who determines this? What's your solution? How do we fix that? Who determines what is and is not an infringement of someone else's speech based on level of offense? These services need to put forward clear terms of service that dictate what is an offense that is bannable or causes a suspension. It's they not do. very hard to realize that but they already the people do. who are controlling these services need to put rules in place. Yes, and the rules currently are inadequate. They certainly are not preventing abuse, as sure. we're hearing about these abuse problems all the time. So obviously they need to improve their rules. So you just said people. So you would, you would uh, advocate for human input. Yeah, you're going to you're going to have to have humans to write these rules. There's no robot that's going to write this for you. I don't, I don't understand the question. OK, well, let me clarify the question. Assume I'm a dummy. Um, it's algorithmic or there's human input. So Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, for example, have argued that it's not the byproduct of human input. They vehemently argued that it's algorithmic. Now, of course, people on the right. What is algorithmic? That so, of course, people on the right. Let me let me finish what I'm what I'm what I'm saying here. I appreciate it. I'll let you answer. Um, They've said it's not human input. As someone personally who was, I think your site actually wrote about this TechCrunch. I certainly know it was written about at Engadget and Gizmodo uh, when Facebook was found to have had human input determining pages that had to be throttled and could not be viewed. There was Ted Cruz for president, Chris Kyle Foundation, and yours truly. And we had to settle this legally. So I've been through this. I've experienced it. I've experienced the wrath of human input when said human doesn't like what you have to say. Do you see uh, how dangerous it would be to simply give over over uh, the, the rights in, in, in this capacity just to someone who can change, by the way, to change on any given month. What if someone doesn't like what you have to say next month instead of me? 
Uh, you're confusing completely different issues. You're talking about uh, trending topics on Facebook, which had human curators that looked at what was surfaced by the algorithms. No, and that's not it. And then you're somehow comparing that to the rules about harassment. Those are just totally two different things. Well, no, no, they're not. They're not because you talked about you talked about people replying. So we've gone away from phone numbers. We've gone away from reporting right, we've gone because from you trending said the first... topics. No, to replies. no, no, yeah, no, no, right. Josh. We you, are said, different. you said you said you said that humans would have to determine if it was a violation or not. Did you not? Well, humans Josh? would have to write the rules. Josh, did you? Oh, did yeah. you not? Did you not say that a human would have to determine if it was a violation of the guidelines or not? Josh, yes or no? I said that humans have to write the rules. Yes, you want human input. So can you Why see you the problems with because you keep trying to move away from it? You made that point. I'm not making it up. People can go back to the tail of the tape. So you were advocating for human input. Could you not see how that might be problematic based on the fact that humans have inherent biases? Uh, yeah, humans do have inherent biases, but if you want to write rules for a social network, no robot is going to write those rules for you. I never said they should. I don't Josh. understand. How do you? How do you? Josh, I never how said would they you should. propose on the other side? We would create rules for dictating how uh, harassment was treated, but the rules were written by algorithms. That's like a science fiction. I never said you the rules. Should, no, I never. No, I never said the rules should be written by algorithms. And I know that tech is kind of your one card to play. So you want to go back to that. I want to go back to what it is that you said. A human should determine what is a violation of these guidelines. You said a human would have to go in because I said, what if the alt right, right people mass flagged reported it? Human would have to write rules it. that are applied right. evenly and consistently across the and service. And you are advocating more human input, correct? I'm advocating for human input to write rules that are then enforced both by algorithms and by human moderators. Yes, exactly. So you were advocating for more human input. There we go. We've answered that question both on rules, which wasn't my point, but determining what is and what is not abuse. So alt-right doesn't like what you have to say. They report you. Human happens to be sympathetic to the alt-right, you're removed. My position here is uh, they already have rules in place that mirror the law. There's one there's person here. For that. There's one person here who's advocating for more than regulations that would mirror the law. That's yourself, and I haven't really heard a justification for it. Again, you're willing to give these freedoms up online to a human to determine what is and what is not offensive. And it's based on the premise that you've written about that freedom of speech is not free if your free speech or my free speech silences or intimidates someone else from speaking freely. This is the premise sure. of your article. And I've heard it taught at colleges across the country what determines or who determines, since you've decided it should be a who determines what is and is not okay to say. We're not talking about harassment. It's already not allowed. We're not talking about doxing. It's already not allowed. We're talking about offensive speech online, which would be considered a violation of someone else's free speech. Who decides and what is this violation? The owners of the services that you're using for free. Yes. If you don't want to use those services, there is an open and unmediated internet that you are allowed to publish whatever you'd like on. But if you're going to use a social network that's created by somebody else, then you are beholden to their rules. Sure. You see the issue here, right? You're the one who has a problem with their rules. Right. The rules currently don't protect people from harassment sufficiently. Right. So and I'm so asking you, how, what new rules, rules need to be written? What new rules? And how do we enforce them? What new rules and who enforces them? Let's zone in on this. What should be considered right now? What should be considered offensive enough speech, in your opinion, to be removed from the platform? Unconsensual nudity. Uh, threats of violence. Unconsensual nudity Groups is allowed and legal on a platform. Sending dick pics or sending pornography is allowed because last I checked, that's a violation of the current services on Twitter and what Facebook. What I'm saying is that, yeah, but the rules are not being properly enforced, nor are they strong enough. And so this week, Twitter announced that it was creating stronger rules to more expressly forbid unconsensual nudity, threats of violence, and use by hate groups that have used violence in the past to get their way. Sure, yeah. It's pretty clear. So the, yeah, right, exactly. But your article isn't about the rules, the current rules. You're proposing new rules. You're talking about speech, not just sending nudity. So I right. want to know about speech, about what determines... Where abuse happens. And I'm saying that if somebody is reported and found to have been abusive, then they should not be allowed 
to reply to other accounts with that abuse. Sure. So outside of nudity or current violations of their service, you wouldn't consider it to be abuse then. For example, if I respond something that somebody doesn't like, they may deem offensive, we would both agree that's not something that should be a violation of use. That depends on context. It depends on what you're saying and how you phrase it. Okay, so current rules. What additional rules? You write civility is a tightrope between chaos and censorship. You talk about needing new rules and enforcing them. What new rules and how would they be enforced by whom? You just said you don't Accounts have to use their... that abuse people can't what reply is abuse? to other what people. What is abuse? You, I, you feel like talking slower makes your point what smarter, is abuse, but they don't. Josh? <laughs> what is abuse, Josh? Who determines abuse? Give Okay, let's do this. Give me an example. We just did. We just went through it. <laughs> it's already illegal. You propose new rules in your article. You propose offensive speech be limited, not nudity, not threatening with violence. So what would be abuse? What right now that is allowed would you disallow? Because that's what you're advocating for. I'm just trying to get a straight answer. Give me an example. When somebody replies to your account and tells you that they want to hurt you, that they want to hurt your family, and they say, they say uh, you know, awful, unspeakable words to you, and they reply to you every day, and then you report them and they get banned, and then they create a new account and they do that same thing the next day so that every time you open Twitter, you see that content, no matter how many accounts you ban, that's the kind of rule that I'm trying to, uh, that I'm advocating for. It already exists. It, it doesn't because this happens all the time to people. And if it, People and commit if murder all the, the time, Josh. Does that mean murder is legal? This isn't legal. People need to read read your own article. You were advocating yeah, new you rules. Get put I'm not in talking jail about for murder. Then you can't create a new life the next day and then go murder someone again. That could like not you, be you less relevant to the point, how Josh. The point is, Josh. And the social point networks is, operate differently than the real world, and I think that that's a problem. Actually, I do. You're the one who doesn't understand what the about. First Amendment is, apparently, because you go to the founding and the First Amendment, and how it couldn't possibly take into account today's interconnectivity. You're the one who invokes the First Amendment. I fully understand how people operate on Twitter and Facebook. Book. My grandmother does when she sends forwards of prairie dogs testicles, okay? This is not a tech issue just because you write for TechCrunch. We're talking about a freedom of speech issue. These rules already exist. If you commit murder, you get punished. If you send nudity on Twitter, if you commit harassment, you get banned to the best of their abilities. Some get through just like OJ got through. You're advocating new rules, saying that the rules are not enough and that people... Yep need to be, uh, in your own words, you discuss the, the, the class hierarchy. So let's get to that. Systems of oppression. You talk about white men versus black children. Let's go to that example that you wrote about in your article so that we don't get wishy-washy. Give that example to our audience, why it's a problem and what you think Facebook or Twitter should do about it. Uh, those are Facebook's rules, and if you want to quote my article, you're welcome to. Okay. So you talk about how, for example, uh, in your article, white men would be protected under Facebook, where if you write something negative about white men, that could be removed, correct? Uh, that is Facebook's uh, perspective. Right. Well, you write about that. And then you complain that black children simultaneously would not be protected, correct? Correct. Okay. Black Why children, is that a because they, well, Facebook says that if you have a protected class uh, that is protected against discrimination, which includes things like race, uh, ethnicity, religion, but that term is combined with an unprotected class like age, then suddenly the whole statement is not protected uh, under its abuse rules. And so, yeah, I think that just because sure. somebody says that someone is uh, a white old man, that they shouldn't be subject to abuse when white man is not allowed to be abused. And that seems pretty clear, pretty simple to me, right? Like if somebody was like, all white grandmas are terrible, but they don't you think that that should be that that that's abuse or that, uh, compare if when especially when all white people are are you know are awful that that is abuse the 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 line differentiating those makes no sense and facebook has implemented that that rule system uh but it just needs to be improved okay um now the reason i bring this up is because when i bring up examples from your article um you move to a different example this is a concrete example we can use and i think it's disingenuous you can tell me if you think i'm wrong so you say white men would be protected black children would not I'm quick, not saying that. This is question. Facebook's rule. Quick, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And you have a problem with the rule as it, and its current implementation, as you just expressed very articulately. So white men is protected, black children are not. Let me ask you this. Is black men protected? 
Uh, yeah, black man is protected. What about white children? Not protected. So you kind of injected race into an issue where it was irrelevant to the current rules on Facebook. No, that, the issue isn't no, black white. Again, if your issue, your issue, I yeah, want to is. clarify it's, it and be re I'll be reductive. We can do that. If I mean, you think Facebook needs to, this, uh, yes, so yes, I'm sure I know that you did. If your point that, is that Facebook doesn't take into account ageism, fine. But you use an example of a white man and black children. And that's a disingenuous example, as though Facebook think, in any well, capacity well, is well, somehow why marginalizing people of color. Do you think that color. those two people, those two groups deserve equal protection? I don't think that ageism is the same as race. I don't think that age is as relevant, and clearly Facebook doesn't. I don't right. think it's so, a genuine, so I think it's a very disingenuous example. So you're agreeing for you to that, say like, white that males are protected being, and black children aren't. So you're, so you're agreeing that people being abused based on the, uh, their race isn't okay? I, I, we didn't discuss anyone being abused. Here. We're not discussing direct you, abuse. We are discussing, you mentioned classes who would be protected on Facebook and who wouldn't. You said white men would, black children wouldn't. The fact is, white children that's wouldn't Facebook's and black men wouldn't. This is not exactly. my It's not my a racial issue. But you write consistently about racial issues and minorities who need to be protected. And I understand where you're coming from as a more of a leftist. You just said Black Lives Matter, definitely on Twitter, even if they don't have phone numbers. So my, my question becomes, you've also mentioned actors. I think you, you, you've talked about Leslie Jones before. Can we acknowledge that maybe systems of power are different than just race, gender? Maybe Leslie Jones has more power to harass with her millions of followers than a straight white cis male who only has a handful. Uh, no, abuse is about the way that people use the platform, not, not how many people follow it. The potential for abuse. Because you've yeah, talked about comes power down to and systems of if power If somebody has hate in their heart. So, yeah, it doesn't matter how many followers you have. If you say hateful things, you're abusive. You've talked systemically about social media entities needing to assist with and protect marginalized classes, correct? Yes. Okay. So my point is this. Abuses of power can be significantly more harmful with someone who may be a black female, like let's say Leslie Jones, and she creates a targeted harassment campaign, or take your pick, uh, as opposed to a straight, cis, white male. Should that not be taken into account equally when enforcing these rules? No, the, the content of the abuse should be Assuming what's focused on. Assuming the content is this, well, no, because you write in your article about marginalized classes and systems of oppression and how you have not done enough to correct this, how white males need to do more to correct this. Correct? Incorrect. So, so do you think that you have less power despite your ethnicity and your uh, gender than Wesley Jones because, Absolutely. because she has more Twitter followers? Absolutely. You think that because I, she has more I yes, yes. Let me answer. You're subject to less Let me abuse. do the opposite of what Why you're doing you here, Josh. On the street Let me and see if I don't need you to. I can just go on. By abuse. <laughs> I don't need to. I can just go on Twitter. We're talking about abuses of Twitter rules here, Josh. Remember, this is your right. article, not That's mine. That's why we're so trying to Leslie create Jones so that be or gets not, abused. Or not be able to abuse these guidelines more effectively and more powerfully than, say, my producer, myself. My point is, you use a disingenuous example, as we've just discussed, and you look at everything through the prism of race or gender. You're not taking everything no, into account, and you want the, people who share your you're opinion looking to at be it through, the, through the, uh, the lens of race and gender. I'm saying that abuse is abuse. Okay. Abuse is abuse. So we've just acknowledged on the platform of Twitter that someone who would have significantly more power on Twitter would be capable of significantly greater abuses. No, we're saying that the content of the abuse is what matters. It doesn't matter. I'm assuming the content is the same. The, the content is the same. I'm, po I'm doing the same kind of thing. A targeted harassment campaign, Leslie Jones is. Let's say... Uh, Leslie Jones isn't, and you know that. Uh, okay, and, like, I'm using it as, as, using as, it as an example. Abusive campaigns you is are ridiculous. suggesting that it is... I didn't say she did. Josh. So why don't you pick an alt-right figure who's uh, coordinated one of these abuse, figure, uh, these abuse campaigns, who has lots of followers, and you can use them as your example. Okay, you pick one. No, I'm, I'm saying you're the one who's, who's picking random you people. You pick an example. You seem to have Jones, one in so. mind. I was using him as an example because you've written about Leslie no, Jones. I, so you like pick said, an alt-right figure. You're the one figure. picking Leslie. So if you, why don't you pick a, another, uh, another figure uh, I don't know I'm not alt-right. I don't, I don't know I'm not alt-right. Who actually does abuse. I don't know I'm not alt-right. So you can pick one, and we could compare it and use a hypothetical scenario. Okay, Take so, anyone you want. 
So you don't know, and, but you're just randomly picking random people. But you said you don't no, know. No, I didn't randomly pick someone and say that she committed any kind of abuse on Twitter. I was talking about systems of power, as you write about in your article, saying that as a white male, you haven't done enough to correct this. You effectively call to action other white males to correct this injustice online. Correct or incorrect? Am I misrepresenting you there? Yeah, I think people okay. with power should speak up for victims and those who are abused. And you believe that someone has more power simply because he is white and straight online than someone who has 800 times the followers and reach and financial uh, backing. No, what I'm saying is that the content of someone's abuse is what needs to be considered, not how many followers they have. Yes, the content should be considered. So content being equal, let's say alt-right person, okay, does the exact same thing that I don't know, Leslie Jones, let's say, Will Smith, I don't know if he's on Twitter. I'm trying to take any minority here. I'm not attributing <laughs> it to any specific minority. Maybe he's not on Twitter. I have no Maybe idea. Maybe it's James not about Smith. minority. Maybe you just pick two white people, one with more followers. And no, I'm, I'm picking it because people. it's your example where you call on people to fix these systems of oppression. You specifically call on <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, and white male writers to rectify this situation. That's what you write about, based on race. Your entire article is written through the prism of race. And what I'm saying no, is when you're not. white. You, yes. you read race into everything, apparently. Uh, but yeah, I agree. White Have men you not written do need that to as... stand up for those who are abused. OK. Do and you, you don't see that as a, You don't see that as a statement based entirely on race. Do you agree that, that, that white men, who are some of the most powerful people in the world, the people who uh, are naturally advantaged by the current unjust systems, you think that, that I, I just don't understand, you don't think that they should stand up for victims? No, I think everybody should. Right, but should white men stand up for victims? They would be included amongst everybody. Yeah, but do you think that they might have outsized uh, responsibility because they have outsized power? No, I just base it on the content. Right, exactly. So, uh, so we both agree then that what matters. Right, we just based it on the content. You just brought up. So, why would white men could not be less relevant? That's my point. We agree. Whether it's a white man or a black female, the abuse is the abuse, and the abuse of power can be more powerful if this person has a much greater platform. And my point is, your call to action, as you just did now, I'm glad that we've clarified, is to white men to correct these institutional forms of discrimination. And that is the presupposition yep. of your new rules and guidelines when dictating what speech is and is not allowed. And it doesn't no, take into account individuals. I just think that white men do need to stand up for victims of abuse. Right. How about good men? Uh, yeah, all good men need so to why stand did you up lead with for victims of men? abuse. Why not good men? Do you not consider because yourself a Because they are them? the ones who are unnaturally privileged in this system, and so they need to be able to, they need to be the ones willing to stand up, whether it's sexual assault and harassment, whether it's online abuse. White men who control a lot of things in this world do need to stand up and stand with victims. That right. seems pretty reasonable. You know, it's the same way that you know major politicians who hold power in countries around the world need to stand up for victims of abuse and for human rights. Okay, so would you believe when Barack Obama was president that this man was more powerful than, say, the white man tilling the cornfields? Um, I'm not sure about your, what I would say is that the president is more powerful than an average citizen, yes. A black president, again, because you said white men need to fix this problem. I said, how about good men, right? A black president, Barack Obama, would he or and you just use politicians as an example. I'm following your logic trail. Yeah, We're serving the sure common would, master. But he sure did. Whereas what most white men have not or a lot of white men have not and stood up for, against problems there the way is. that they need to. There so, it is. Yeah. He, so this there, is and this is, there it is. <laughs> this is what you've written about in your article, correct? Yeah. Yes. And you don't see that as being written through the prism of race. No, I'm, I'm okay. saying that white okay. men need Good. to Good, that's fine. We can let that stand where it is. I, we disagree. I think that saying white men specifically and only seeing systems of power uh, through the prism of race is seeing it through the prism of race. You don't. So perfect world here. But what you're trying Let's to do on. is Let's a race on. race as if it's not a problem in this country. And that's just ridiculously false. No, I didn't do and that. So if you really think that everyone is already treated equally and so everyone should stand up equally for abuse, then you clearly have a misguided view of the world. You don't think that everyone should equally stand up 
in the face of abuse. I sure do, but I sure don't think that everyone is equally privileged to stand up, and that's why those with more power... I don't believe that everyone is equally privileged. On that, we agree. I simply don't see privilege exclusively through the lenses of race and gender. My point is there are people who can be abused on these social media platforms simply for having unpopular views, regardless of whether white, black, gay, st straight, trans, male, female. That's my point, and it happens every day. And you see that all the time. Unpopular viewpoints, it's a pendulum that swings, for example. You know, right now, yours would be less popular amongst many people in the tech community or people with social media who would advocate for more open platforms. I think your views shouldn't be censored. To use your words, I think you should be as free to express it as I am. And I would like to see oh, rules from Facebook and Twitter that. and... I would absolutely, even if you, even if you at replied me a thousand times a day, which would likely be a violation of their guidelines, I would defend your right to do it. You're the one advocating the opposite, and you're advocating the opposite through your article, again, exclusively through the prism of race and gender. And, you're right. Uh, I'm advocating against abuse. You nailed it. Yes. Yes, you're advocating against abuse and attributing abuse exclusively to uh, people of a given race, or gender nope. and a system of classes. You just asked not white. Yeah, listen, we're not, not going so, to Let's, let's to a go back. Race. Let's I'm finalize just saying. on this. Closing thoughts. What <laughs> happens in Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and your perfect world? What happens right now? What is YouTube, for example, missing? Uh, my article was about Facebook and Twitter. I think okay, YouTube what is has Facebook and Twitter complicated missing? problems? Um, Facebook needs to create uh, policies that understand where privilege lies and does not protect people uh, or does not allow abuse of certain races just because there's a modifier like age attached to them. Yeah. And Twitter needs to create better rules to prevent abuse through the reply system. Sure. Yeah. That's well, my you favorite. write for a major publication like TechCrunch and uh, we're an independent outlet. So I would love to see you go on your own and see where the privilege lies. That's my point. We just need to let free speech be free speech for all, regardless of race, gender orientation. Then it becomes a really simple simple issue. May sound reductive. Hey, maybe it is. Either yeah, free it speech or reductive because across it the sounds board. like it means that people who are abused don't need any special help. Yeah, I know. People when you hear it that way, if you hear it through the ears of race, yeah, yeah you would hear me saying that people should be right. abused. Josh, thank you well, so much. People, we'll have you back and uh, we'll talk about this more. I'm sure you'll write about it, no doubt. People, you can comment and, and see where your opinions line up. I appreciate Josh coming on here. It's very difficult often for us to get people with uh, opposing viewpoints uh, to discuss these issues. I really do appreciate it. Josh, thank you very much, sir, and uh, we'll have you back. Hey, did you like this video? It, what, you didn't? Oh, you're a cat person? Well, that makes sense. Disregard him and or her slash Z. Everyone else, hit the subscribe button and leave your comment below as to why you like this video. Hey, you know what, crazy cat, you can get back, you can, you can comment below too as to why you don't like it.